Good morning. Ah, third time's a charm. I found the microphone. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started, but please feel free to um, feed yourselves, nourish yourselves, get coffee, um, stay hydrated throughout this morning's event. Um, there's delicious food in the back. I've already eaten an entire plate, and my Danish is awaiting me um, while I watch the presentations this morning. So hello and welcome to our 2023-2024 Grad Rebel Advantage commencement. Um, this is always a very special event, and I am absolutely honored to be here um, with all of you, and I'm delighted to see so many family members. So uh, welcome, welcome. My name is Alyssa Crittenden. I'm the Vice Provost for Graduate Education and the Dean of the Graduate College here at UNLV, and I'll be starting us off this morning and then handing off the mic to my colleagues um, to shepherd us through this wonderful event this morning. I'd like to begin with our UNLV land acknowledgement. The University of Nevada, Las Vegas wishes to acknowledge and honor the indigenous communities of this region and recognize that the university is situated on the traditional homelands of the Nuwu Southern Paiute people. We offer gratitude for the land itself, for those who have stewarded it for generations, and for the opportunity to study, work, learn, and be in community with this land. UNLV believes that it's important to recognize and appreciate the use of Southern Paiute land as part of its mission, and to be a welcoming and inclusive place for working and learning. We are happy to welcome you all today to the 2023-2024 Grad Rebel Advantage mentors and mentees. Last fall, about 100 undergraduate students entered this program with the goal of figuring out if graduate school was for them. They learned about preparing to be competitive applicants for graduate school and about how to be successful once they were admitted. Advantage mentees engaged in a wide variety of activities, including meetings with academic advisors, the Office of Undergraduate Research, and the Writing Center. They participated in professional development workshops, attended both cultural and research events on campus, and were actively mentored by a current graduate student throughout the year. We'd like to recognize everyone who has come together to support this program and participating students. And I'd like to take um, a quick moment to thank our Grad Academy team, who not only supported all of the students this year, but is hosting this wonderful event and was really there for that structured and unstructured support all year long. So a special shout out to the Grad Academy and to Alyssa Gardner in particular, who is our event and program manager and has really helped throughout the year um, keep everything going. We are indebted to her. We'd also like to thank our graduate students, of course, um, the Grad Rebel Advantage mentors. And I see some of you sitting here in the audience right now. Um, they have spent the entire academic year investing their time mentoring the undergraduate cohorts. We are so very grateful for your commitment to supporting your mentees. Thank you, thank you. We'd also like to thank our co-sponsors and partners, Academic Advising, Financial Aid and Scholarships, Consolidated Students of UNLV, CSUN, the Office of Undergraduate Research, the Academic Success Center, the Center for Academic Enrichment and Outreach, the Graduate and Professional Student Association, GPSA, the Intersection, University Libraries, the UNLV Writing Center, and of course, Career Services. This program would not be possible without the support and collaboration of all of these units across campus. They say it takes a, a village to raise a child, and it certainly takes the rebel village um, to raise good mentors and mentees. So thank you so much to our university partners. Like all of us in the UNLV community, this year's Grad Rebel Advantage group also faced an immense challenge in persevering through troubling times in the wake of the December 6th tragedy. Today we come together to celebrate their resilience and their achievements as students, members of our community, and as Advantage program participants. We celebrate their accomplishments from this past academic year and wish them the very best of luck in their future endeavors. 
Now I'd like to welcome my colleagues, Ann Masterman and Lori Filippo from Recruitment and Admissions to share a few remarks. Thank you so much and please enjoy this commencement event. All right, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Lori Filippo. I'm the Assistant Director for Grad Recruitment. And hi, everyone. My name is Ann Masterman, and I'm the Director of Recruitment, and we are your graduate recruitment team. So you might recognize us from our office. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations on completing the Grad Rebel Advantage program. I am a huge advocate for the Grad Rebel Advantage program as it not only prefer, prepares you professionally, but also personally. Um, I have no doubt that each of you will continue to take steps towards your goals and to never miss out on an opportunity to further your education. As you continue your journey, always know that you have support each step of the way. Um, this is from mentors, professors, advisors, coordinators, friends, family, and much more. Um, so you are not alone on this journey. So again, congratulations, and I will let Anne go ahead and provide a few words. Yes. Thanks, Lori. And to piggyback on that, um, one of the things I think that is really great about the, gra the Grad Rebel Advantage program is you're already well on your way to graduate school. You are already well prepared with the knowledge, the skills, the practical experience, the mentorship that's going to help you succeed in graduate school. And uh, on behalf of the Office of Graduate Recruitment and Admissions, uh, Lori and I are here to help you. So whether you've already started your application or you've already, um, or you're thinking about applying to graduate school, feel free to visit our office. We're located in the Student uh, Service Complex, SSC, Building B. Come in any time. We're happy to help you. We're happy to help you with your application, answer any questions, um, and work with you to help you achieve your graduate school-related goals. So thank you very much for having us, and again, congratulations. All right, thank you, Dean Crittenden. Thank you, Lori, and thank you, Anne. Um, my name is Alyssa Gardner. For those of you who I have not met in person, hello. Thank you so much for going through this program this year. Um, every year, we ask our Grad Rebel Advantage mentees to prepare a three minute elevator pitch answering the question Why am I a good candidate for graduate school? The winners of each cohort win a graduate college application waiver and are invited to present at Grad Rebel Advantage commencement. So today we actually get to hear from 10 mentee winners. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker today, Marde Castro. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Marde Giselle Castro, and I'm a first-generation Filipino-American, currently in my second year here at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, majoring in human services with minors in both family studies and addictions treatment. On campus, I stay involved as a member of UNLV's chapter of the National Society of Collegiate Scholars, a member of the Philippinex American Student Association, and serve as the 2023 to 2024 president of the Gamma Lambda chapter of Tau Upsilon Alpha, the Honor Society for the National Organization of Human Services. You can also find me getting experience in the field as a student worker at UNLV's Community Mental Health Clinic, The Practice, or volunteering throughout the community with Catholic Charities of Southern Nevada, providing food to underprivileged people in the city, or with Spread the Word Nevada, cleaning used books to distribute to children in low-income communities in the state. My plan is to graduate with my bachelor's degree in the spring of 2025 and go on to complete a master's in either social work or or couples and family therapy to one day become a therapist for victims of trauma and give back to the field that gave so much to me. Here's my story. I'm what's considered a non-traditional student. I graduated from Liberty High School here in Las Vegas in 2016 and started my higher education journey at Nevada State as a nursing student. But that stint did not last very long because I was diagnosed with an autoimmune thyroid disease in the spring 
of the following year at 18, I found out soon after that my Graves' disease onset could be attributed to the stress from unresolved trauma from my younger years. So post-traumatic stress disorder was another notch on my belt. The stress from school exacerbated by my thyroid condition and my thyroid condition exacerbated my PTSD. So I was forced to take a hiatus for my health. At one point there, I couldn't even hit a speed bump too fast without a panic attack. I never thought I would function normally again. But with the proper medication to level my hormones and copious amounts of therapy to help manage my PTSD symptoms, I slowly became healthy again. Healthy enough to, by a miracle, fall pregnant at 19 and have my beautiful boy named Azari at the age of 20. The pandemic hit before my boy turned two, so I was blessed to stay home with him until at four and 24 in the fall of 2022, we both started school. Azari in preschool and me here at UNLV, dedicated to join the field that gave me my life back. Today, Azari is five and gearing up for kindergarten and I am 25 going into the last year of my bachelor's degree. Everything I have been through has led to right now. The resilience and dedication to thrive through everything that I have, to manage my time enough to maintain a Dean's List GPA, be involved on the campus and in the community, all while working a job and raising a young man, is what makes me a great candidate for graduate school. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marde. What an inspiring story. Thank you. Um, so next up, we have Rihanna Sandoval. Hello, everyone. My name is Rihanna Sandoval, and I will be graduating from UNLV's Honors College with my bachelor's degree in science this winter. I'm a hardworking, dedicated individual with a passion for science and helping others. And what better way to expand on that passion than by going into the medical field? For that reason, I plan on attending medical school with the intention of becoming a physician. Growing up, I would always tag along to my grandparents' doctor's appointments, and that is when my interest in medicine was initially sparked. Ever since, I've had my mind set on becoming a doctor, that drive was only ignited brighter when I had my own health scare my third year at UNLV when my doctor found a lump in my breast. Luckily, it was just a fibroid, so nothing to be concerned about. But while going through the imaging and biopsies, I learned a lot about the process with my doctors and got to hear their thoughts about being a part of the medical field. Being a patient has allowed me insight into what is important in being a doctor, like kindness and compassion as well as the ability to critically think. I would make an exceptional candidate for medical school because I'm a problem solver, a leader, and I have perseverance. I maintained a strong GPA during my biology trek and am a Dean's List student. I'm also the active treasurer of UNLV's Hillel. Throughout my college career, I have worked as an office manager at a luxury automotive shop where I'm responsible for leading and assisting my team with any challenges, as well as organizing finances and calculating payroll. Working while going to school has provided me with excellent time management skills. Another thing that I'm excited about is my involvement in the Las Vegas community and eventually serving the people of the city I've spent my entire life. I'm currently a big sister with the Big Brother Big Sister organization mentoring a 13-year-old girl. I am also a committee member for the American Cancer Society's Game Changer Gala, which partners with the NFL to raise money to bring cancer screening opportunities to underrepresented communities in the Valley. For the event that was held in February, I was the volunteer chair, which included directing the day of volunteers to their posts and answering their questions, as well as working closely with ACS management and honorees. This year, we raised over $300,000 for the cause, exceeding our goal. Along with community service, I have spent 150 hours or so shadowing various physicians, gaining invaluable knowledge and a taste of what it is like to be a doctor. Working closely with physicians has given me the confidence that I am capable of thriving in medical school. I can't wait to take the next steps on my path to becoming a knowledgeable and compassionate doctor. Thank you.
Wonderful. Thank you so much, Rihanna. So next we have McKenna Webb. Good morning, everyone. My name is McKenna Webb, and I am currently a senior psychology student minoring in neuroscience at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Throughout my undergraduate career, I've consistently demonstrated a high level of academic achievement. My strong GPA, along with taking rigorous classes in psychology and neuroscience, have reflected my dedication to mastering subject matter. I have also engaged in numerous research projects as an undergraduate research assistant, showcasing my ability to delve de deeply into um, psychological topics and as well as contribute insights into the field. My experience as the lead front desk administrator for the Power in Charge Up mental health grant programs has allowed me to interact with individuals struggling with bipolar and psychosis focused disorders, encouraging me to provide them the smoothest care possible. Due to this, I bring the practical experience and skills that commonly align with the demands of graduate school programs. However, not all of my experience as an undergrad has been focused on academic excellence and skill building. As the current president of the UNLV chapter of PSYCHI, the International Honor Society in Psychology, I have been able to meet with community members to um, further educate and bring awareness to various mental health topics. In the past, I have coordinated a professional ap appearance at the university president's mental health town hall, as well as lead a UNLV community team for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention's fundraising walk. Similarly, by attending conferences hosted by the National Academy of Neuropsychology, as well as the American Academy for Clinical Neuropsychology, I have been exposed to professional discussions on rec recent research findings and new innovations within the field. These experiences of mine d demonstrate that I am an individual who can make immediate contributions to academic research and community endeavors within graduate programs. Lastly, I am genuinely passionate about neuropsychology and have a defined vision for how pursuing a graduate degree will contribute to my per per personal and professional growth. Throughout my clinical experience, I've witnessed firsthand how advancements within the field of psychology can be used to better someone's life for the better. Seeing clients positively progress and live comfortably at the hands of our psychologists has allowed me to recognize how fruitful the field is fostering an excitement about the prospect of being able to do that for someone else one day. In summary, my strong academic record, relevant clinical experience, and overall enthusiasm for the field makes me a compelling candidate for graduate school. I recognize that earning a higher level of education, especially to help individuals struggling with mental illness, is a privilege that not many people are bestowed. And I am confident that my unique blend of skills will not only contribute to a graduate program, but also thrive in collaborative and intellectually stimulating environments at various institutions. Thank you. OK, thank you so much, McKenna. Um, next, we have Monica Souza Sue. Come on up. Good morning, everybody. Feels good to be here. We're finally at the finish line, so congrats, everybody. <laughs> um, so my name is Monica Sozasu. I'm currently an undergraduate student in physics under the, um, or an undergraduate student in the College of Sciences under the physics and astronomy department. And so I really wanted to actually do astrophysics, but then that's when I kind of got sat down by Dr. Taopeng, the, the the head of the department of physics, and he kind of he kind of um, diagnosed me with graduate school, he was like, yeah, you're going to graduate school. So that's why I joined the Grad Rebel Advantage program because I really didn't know what it was. So I joined the program to kind of understand what I was getting into before committing. And so with my experience, I learned that there are really four core tenets to being a good graduate student. One of them I found was tenacity because there are many days where we feel like quitting or maybe life tries to make you quit forcibly. But looking around this room, you know, we're all around here, we all persevered. So I do think that I embody tenacity. Another core tenet is patience. So as academics or, you know, just being people, we know that there are many times where you're gonna fail. You're gonna fail over and over again. And I attended a origin story by um, Dr. Keith E. Whitfield, and he talked extensively about how like, you are going to fail a lot, 
But having that courage to keep going is what really sets you apart from everybody else. Another tenet is balance. So a lot of us, we struggle with like where to put school, where to put our personal lives, and towing that line of balance can really give you a different perspective on the things you're tr seeking to accomplish every single day, right? You take a step back and you're like, hmm, I didn't think about it that way. And so I do think that I try to have that balance in my life with school and personal life. And finally, it's passion. I recently attended a star party by the um, Society of Physics students for the first time. And I think it was the first time in my life where I looked up at the sky, because you know, Vegas, a lot of light pollution and stuff. But I looked up at the night sky and I saw shooting stars and all types of stars. And I just thought to myself like, hmm, maybe I am going in the right direction. And so for me, passion is so important. And if you don't love what you're doing, then why are you really doing it, right? And so that's why I think that I'd be a good candidate for graduate school. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next we have Otonio Ramos. All right. Oh. So, hello everyone. My name is Otoniel Ramos. I'm a junior here at UNLV. Um, and so my academic journey has been driven by a desire to understand complex political phenomena, but at the same time, develop new methods to quantify political behavior and legal behavior in effort to strive for more data-driven policy making. With the foundation in political science, coupled with minors in mathematics, public policy, and great works, I bring a multidisciplinary perspective to the table. I believe that the problems our world faces today require solutions that pull from multiple disciplines. So to begin with a bit of my academic background, I am the first in my family to attend college. I have maintained a competitive GPA with two publications and a forthcoming third. Through my work on my honors thesis, I believe I have demonstrated at least some capability to undertake the rigors of a graduate education. Beyond this, I think the independent research projects I have taken on point to a real commitment, not only to my discipline, but to the research that I am passionate about. At the professional level, I've had the privilege of working on issues that are important to me and developing my skills in context where the, my skills in research and writing in context where their quality and accuracy could have tangible consequences for the people I was serving. During my time at the UNLV Immigration Clinic, I undertook research on countries like Ethiopia and Saudi Arabia, aiding people's asylum cases and gaining insights into the far-reaching impacts of US foreign policy. This experience only reinforced my commitment to understanding and addressing the often overlooked consequences of such policies, particularly on marginalized global communities. And so my goals are simple. They are to actively contribute to the research in my discipline in an interdisciplinary fashion and translating the graduate school experience into a stepping stone for a career where I actively shape impactful policy and contribute to the global dialogue on human rights. And so to wrap this up, I want to mention that my goals are rooted in deeply personal convictions. As a son of two immigrant parents, raised in a community surrounded by their hopes and their resilience, I've always perceived immigration status not merely as a policy challenge, but as a fundamental human rights issue. This perspective has fueled my aspirations to become a human rights lawyer, scholar, and advocate. And this conviction has led me to seek both experiences and education in service of those goals. Thank you.
All right, thank you so much. I'm so excited for these future graduate students. Uh, I'm not sure if Laura was able to make it here today. Laura, are you here? OK, then we're going to move on. And next we have Jacqueline Rodriguez. Hello, everybody. My name is Jacqueline Rodriguez. I'm a first generation Chicana co uh, college student, meaning that I'm the first one in my family to go to college. And I'm currently a senior, so I will be graduating in just about two weeks. I am currently a psychology major, and I'm an honors college student. And because of my competitive GPA, I'm also a summa cum laude candidate. Essentially, my goal for graduate school is to earn a master's in public health that will allow me to someday work as an epidemiologist and work closely with disadvantaged communities with a focus on health, disport, um, health disparities. I am motivated by my lived experience because as somebody that, grow, that grew up in a very low income community, I saw just how somebody's environment and where they are, um, where they are in terms of, I would say factors that one can't really control, like in, where somebody, uh, in the life that somebody was placed into can really affect and profoundly impact their quality of life due to different, um, I would say, like inequi inequities um, in our healthcare system that really makes it difficult for some people to lead the healthiest lives for factors out of their control. And because of this, I have a profound passion in advocating for underserved communities like my own. I have had some research experience in the past. As an honors college student, I was given the opportunity to to undergo the honors research, uh, the, under, the honors undergraduate research program, which essentially allowed me to take a sneak peek into the thesis program that many graduate schools have um, in order for somebody to earn their master's degree. So with this, I conducted an extensive review of literature. I formulated a research question about a topic that I was very passionate about, and I had the, the opportunity to create a tool to measure that data analyze it and present my findings in front of a committee of professors. My honors thesis is titled The Association Between Parent-Adolescent Communication About Sex and Risk-Aware Sexual Health Knowledge in Latino College Students. So again, this was tackling um, a specific health disparity within my community. And it was definitely a very fulfilling process and it allowed me to really get a, to really have the opportunity to conduct this type of research in a safe setting where I could receive critical feedback from undergraduate professors before having to undergo that for the first time in a graduate school setting. And because of this, I have developed some, some skills and certifications along the way. For, exa for example, I do have a certificate, um, the city training certificate, which is essentially a course that allows you to really gain the knowledge that you need to conduct an IRB when you're conducting research that involves human subjects. So because of those reasons, I believe that I would be a great candidate for graduate school. All right, we have Tanya Medrano. Good morning, Ooh. check one, okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So to give you a little bit of background on myself, I am a senior here at UNLV and I will be graduating in the spring with a degree in communication studies and an emphasis in organizational and professional communication. But before I started my journey here at UNLV, to give some context, I was enlisted in the United States Air Force, and this played a very pivotal role in my education here, as well as my goals moving into the future. So when I was in the Air Force, I was part of Operation Allies Refuge, which was one of the largest airlift operations out of Kabul, and that was a very foundational um, moment for me and it founded what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, which is gonna be serving and leading, which led me here to UNLV. So here at UNLV, I was part of the debate team and for fall 2024, I will be part of the um, wing ceremony. Here, I also work at Boyd Law and I had seen some students who are interested in law school, so I'm so excited to see your journey. But what does this cultivate into my journey here at UNLV and why should I be a exceptional candidate for graduate school? 
Well, because of my history with the military, I have had a lot of self-accountability. I've seen a lot of wonderful scholars in this room, and it is so fantastic to be rubbing shoulders with some of the greatest minds. It is such a privilege. But to add on to that, you need self-accountability in order to go to grad school. And what does that mean is, hey, I have an assignment that's going to be due on Friday. What am I doing right now to get that done? And it's easier said than done. I'm seeing a lot of head nods like, oh, yeah, I know we're ending close to the semester and we're there, but not quite there yet. The second item is going to be teamwork and resiliency. I really loved how Monica has stated this and the tenacity that you need. Through these speeches, we have seen students who have undergone tremendous tests of resilience. And it would be very easy to say, oh man, you know, well, this happened to me, now what? But instead, from every speaker that I have seen so far, they have said, yes, it has happened to me, and guess what I'm gonna do about it? And that has been so inspiring and motivational. And so taking that attitude and taking that belief and applying it not only to your academics, but to the things that you cannot change, I think is gonna be fundamental to what you're gonna be doing in grad school. And lastly, what I have up is for discipline. Again, it's very easy to say, yep, I'm going to do this assignment. Yes, I'm going to go to these office hours, but it's a matter of actually executing it. What are you going to do to execute that and stay disciplined? We hear a lot about motivation, but motivation comes and goes. But it's going to be that discipline that acts as an anchor. And for these reasons, I believe that I'll be an exceptional candidate. In the future, I would be getting my MBA organizing in management and leadership. I will be commissioning in spring 2025 as an officer in the United States Air Force, which I'm very thrilled about. And with that becomes a lot of responsibility of who I'm gonna be taking care of, who I'm gonna be leading. They're gonna be people's sons, people's daughters, even people's mothers. And for that, I am so, so blessed and so, so grateful to have this opportunity. And the lessons that I learned here throughout this program, it was what it means to have teamwork, what it means to build those relationships with your mentor, what it means to build those relationships with people who work at the graduate college and who are here for us. And for that, I believe I'll be an exceptional candidate. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tanya. Okay, next we have Mackenzie Back. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mackenzie Bach. I am a secondary education major here at UNLV with a minor in mathematics and a minor in computer science. I am also a first generation college student. I'm a great candidate for graduate school because of my passions to encourage more young women and people of color to pursue a STEM career. I have been passionate about encouraging more underrepresented groups to pursue STEM because of my firsthand experience and how exclusive STEM fields can be. This is why I am interested in the curriculum and instruction master's program here at UNLV, specifically the career, technical, and post-secondary education pathway. To help pursue this passion of mine, I am currently interning with the Desert Research Institute and their student educator STEM partnership program. This program is aimed towards improving STEM education in local Las Vegas elementary schools and to provide more opportunities to present STEM concepts to younger students. A major part of a career in education is giving back to your community in more ways than one. Giving back to my community is something I have always been passionate about. I served as the 2022 Director of Community Service for my sorority, the, the Delta Omicron chapter of Alpha Gamma Delta here at UNLV. During my term, I organized group volunteer events with Three Square and the UNLV Food Pantry. Overall, my chapter accumulated over 300 hours of community service during my term. I also served as the 2023 Vice President of Philanthropy for my sorority. During my term, I helped organize multiple fundraising events for our philanthropy, the Alpha Gamma Delta Foundation. Overall, I helped raise over $3,000 for the foundation. Both of these positions showed me the importance of giving back to your community and, and the variety of ways that you can give back. I plan to continue to give back to my community by encouraging future generations to pursue their passions with an emphasis in STEM. I believe the career, technical, and post-secondary education pathway of the Curriculum and Instruction Master's Program here at UNLV will provide me with the best opportunity to learn how to encourage diversity and perseverance in my career in technical classrooms. While my undergraduate career has taught me how to be an effective educator, I lack the specific knowledge necessary for career and technical education. Therefore, I will benefit tremendously from this pathway's course of study since it, will treat me how, since it will teach me how to integrate diversity, equity, and inclusion in my career in technical classrooms. Overall, I believe that my passions, interests, and motivations make me a great candidate for graduate school and is a key step to achieving my goal and becoming an encouraging career and technical educator.
Thank you, Mackenzie. Um, next, we have Dale Mark Atten. Cool. All right. Here we go. I'll try to stay within three minutes for everyone. But let's see. I, I notice how different everyone's presentations are. I like, I like how they got the pictures and all their their resume. So I went real straightforward. I said, why would I be a good candidate for graduate school? And so my inspiration for my seven pillars were the seven habits of highly effective people. So in research terms, I paraphrased the principles with my own experience. So um, the first one is being proactive. I think, I don't know about everyone else, but I love syllabus week. I love knowing what I'm going to do for the next four months. I like to know how I'm gonna allocate my time, my resources, and really just planning ahead. So I didn't even start my timer, so. Okay, if I go long, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll cut it short. But I know graduate school is a, it's driven by my purpose. I wouldn't be the best graduate candidate right now. Why? Because I'm interested in so many different fields, so many different topics. So I know graduate school is ultimately a path I wanna take, and I'm gonna take the time to know what exact program and what exact field I want to specialize in. Um, prioritizing goes in line with being proactive, allocating time and resources, knowing when the papers are due, knowing when the exams are due, and preparing ahead of time for such big assignments. All right, so win-win. Really, this should be the right fit. So once I do find a program that I'm interested in, the idea is to know what they want from me and what I want from them. So it's aligning who I am with their mission statement, um, what they're looking for in a candidate, their test scores, their recommendations, um, really tailoring my application to their program. Um, the last one is, or no, 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 communication. Um, I like to go into office hours. I don't, I try to be home, but I do like asking my professors questions. I think it takes humility and honesty and courage to say, I don't know when I don't understand a topic. So that's something I had to learn in undergraduate, as well as cooperation. And I had a professor, he told me once that life is a group project. So there's no shying away from teamwork, cooperation, um, having the humility also to say, you don't know. And how can I work with others to um, come together? And the last one, my favorite is being a lifelong learner. Um, I wrote that, Learning doesn't stop in the classroom or a lab. It continues when you go home. There's always an opportunity to learn. There's always different things that you can do. And you know, just by the different presenters today, there's so much knowledge and ambition in this room. There's a lot of different ways to, to help the world. And so I hope I stayed within three minutes. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you so much. Um, thank you to everyone in the room for our last presentation, um, Christina Martirosian. She's actually studying abroad in Spain right now, um, but she did say she was gonna tune in a live stream, so hi, Christina, out there. Um, I am going to play her presentation for you all. Hi, everyone. My name is Christina Martirosian, and I'd like to start off by thanking the Grad Rebel Advantage program for accommodating to my situation and studying abroad in Spain this semester, and the time zones just didn't match up. I hope you all are having a lovely day, and today I'm going to be presenting on why I would be a good candidate for graduate school. Starting off with who I am, I am a senior majoring in psychology and minoring in neuroscience. I go to the Honors College. I'm a first-generation student, and I'm Armenian. Going on to academic and uh, professional experience, I am a Hickson Lead Success Scholar and I've been so since my freshman year. This is an organization through the Academic Success Center where you get a scholarship and in turn you have a couple of responsibilities such as sitting in on freshman seminars for exploring majors, tabling for the Academic Success Center, and developing soft skills. I'm also a peer mentor for the Academic Success Center, which means I get to meet one-on-one -on -one with students that are primarily freshmen exploring majors and help them through the struggles that they're facing throughout their college experience. 
I was also a pharmacy technician for three years before deciding to study abroad, where I was able to experience the impact that medication had on the mind and on the patients we had. And this helped me realize that I didn't want to be a psychiatrist and that I wanted to focus on therapy that had medication as the last resort. I was also a research lab assistant before studying abroad for the Auditory Cognition Development Lab, where we researched misophonia, ASMR, frisson, speech-to-sound illusion, and other areas within this field. This helped me open my eyes to research within psychology, and I truly loved it. I am also currently an assistant marketing lead for the Love Yourself Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization in Las Vegas and helps spread mental health awareness on social media. Uh, and I, I hope to continue to be able to do that through this organization. As you know, I am studying abroad in Spain, so I hope to become fluent in Spanish and open my therapy up to the Spanish community. Why graduate school? So I hope to get a PhD in clinical psychology. And as I said, focus primarily on Armenian, Spanish, and other minority communities. I realize the power of the mind and I've learned this through the experiences that I've had, through the classes that I've taken and the books that I've read within psychology, and I have a true deep passion for psychology. I believe my purpose in life is to spread the importance of mental health, and I believe my love for psychology will help me get through all the struggles that I face throughout graduate school and help me continue to love what I do for the rest of the time that I'm a psychologist. Thank you so much for listening. So did this three minute pitch for your cohort groups this semester, um, wishing you all the best in your grad school endeavors, whether you're ready or not, and what that looks like next. Um, so just a reminder, breakfast is out there, coffee, drinks, feel free to refuel if need be. So next up, I am going to introduce today's keynote speaker, Dr. John Hirano. John is a coach, an executive director, an engineer, and an educator. He currently is a goals coach with US Bank while continuing to serve as executive director of Every Nation Church Las Vegas. Prior to relocating to Las Vegas in 2017, John worked on developing educational programs centered around engineering at various levels of education from secondary through higher education. He completed his doctoral studies at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. His discipline was the field of electrical engineering with a focus on developing new low-cost anonometers okay, um, through implementation of modern rapid prototyping practices. Okay. Uh, it was through this journey that he discovered his passion for educating future generations of engineers and assisting young people to unlock their own personal potential. John carries this passage, passion for people and skill set of engineering into each new endeavor, always looking to help individuals who see a brighter and wider future of possibilities. He truly believes that though we all have a story to tell, we also have the opportunity to write our own ending. And on that note, I will turn it over to John. Thank you so much. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Fed? Tell me, I, I saw the food. I was like, I better not eat first I'll eat after. Um, thank you, Grad College, for allowing me to be here again this year. Um, this is definitely one of my favorite events to be a part of. And so I'm so honored and, and grateful. So please give the Grad College one more round of applause. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about this, this idea of seizing the moment. I'll intertwine with a little bit of storytelling and you know, we'll have a little bit of good time here. What I've been most appreciative of, of the presentations that you guys gave was just how much you guys shared about your why, but also about your history. The stories we've gone through, the, the things that have changed us at such a deep level and how important that is to you guys. And for those that have, have communicated that, great. Some of us are still trying to figure that out. I know when I was where you were, it was not top of mind. Um, I was just trying to like, how do I get to tomorrow and get through graduation? 
but a little bit about my story. So I always say this, and in reflecting for this presentation, I have to check myself why do I do it, but I always say that I'm a little kid from Hawaii um, that found my way off into college and, and back home. And I think that's how I feel. I often say that, and I think I still see myself sometimes as a little kid that's still trying to figure things out, that isn't quite sure of, do I belong in the big world? Am I one of the big kids playing at the table? Um, but that's something that I have always been working on and getting through and figuring out, okay, yeah, this is something. I am meant to be here. I am part of this journey. And so I grew up in Hawaii. I got through high school and I was like, hey, what do I want to do next? And I was like, doctor. I said, I think becoming a doctor would be cool because I love helping people. And I was like, that seems challenging. That seems like something that is not easy. Something's wrong up here. So my psych majors, I might need some help later. Um, but that's what it was. So I got, I got there, and then obviously you guys know I'm not a doctor, or not that kind of doctor. But what I came to a point, like, someone came to me and was like, hey, I don't think you're going to be a good doctor. <laughs> and I had to really reflect on it. And, it. and it hit me hard on the inside. Those words by those, that person made me really second guess. So I apply, at that point, this was... Graduation was done, accepted myself into college as a biochem major. Again, something wrong. I was like, biochem, that's the one I want to do for, to become a doctor. And then two weeks before school started, I called my university and said, hey, can I change my major? Can you put me in the engineering program? And they're like, sure. They were crazy. They shouldn't have. Um, but that's what I did. So I ended up becoming an engineering student fell in love with the process. I love problem solving. I love diving into things that are challenging and hard and just wanting to know why things are the way they are. And so I spent the next four years of college trying to figure that out. Decided to become an electrical engineer, always been fascinated by computers, and dove into it with everything I had. Got, got to kind of where some of you are, right? that end of their junior year, kind of in the mix, trying to figure out, okay, what am I doing next? My friends were all getting themselves internships, finding their way into their career path, and I was still like, what do I want to do next? I thought, I, I was like, what am, I, what am I good at? You're like, school. John, you're good at school, so do more of that. What I did find myself was like, I really love to understand how things work. I electrical engineering, do I have any electrical engineering majors in here? No? Okay. I have to go talk to them next. Um, one of the hard things about engin electrical engineering compared to some of the other ones is that your professor will often tell you, just trust me, that's how it is. Right? Physics majors, that's how it is, right? It's like, just trust me. For me to explain this, this is a 500 level class, it's going to take me all semester. Right now, just trust me. But that was never good enough for me. So I wanted to know more. I wanted to understand, okay, what was the deeper understanding? So I found one of my advisors. He was kind enough to say, hey, come under my wing for the summer. We'll spend the summer doing research. I went to the University of Portland. So I, instead of going home for summer, I stayed, stayed away, dove into research, and kind of fell in love with things. Fell in love with the idea of just testing and living in the lab and trying to understand why, why are things the way they are? Do these models make sense? Do the things we do actually trust me, right? Are those actually the things? And so I spent my summer there, fell in love with the process, studied for my GRE, because that was required. Uh, and I was like, oh, I better get some of those engineering students. We're great at math, verbal skills. We got to work a little bit. So I knew I had to put some work in. So I put the energy in, got myself prepared, applied for grad school during my senior year. And I got into where I wanted to get into. Got into my, my, my REACH schools, was kind of confident what I wanted to be. But for some of our older folks, it was 08. <laughs> the economics is kind of weird in the country. And so the question came up, do I want to go and put myself into debt and go to my dream school and pay another, let's call it $200,000 for grad school? Or do I want to take the opportunity to go home? Don't want to take the opportunity to be back around family, go to the University of Hawaii, because they said, hey, can you teach this lab? We'll pay for school. And I said, sure. Free college? Absolutely. 
But it was a lot of trying to figure out what's going on, right? I still in that moment, I was like, what am I doing? What, what's, these what's happening? But I told myself, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's take a leap, jump out there, and figure out what's next. And I was, again, still trying to figure things out. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. You're going to learning about me, kind of. I said, hey, PhD program, that's what I want to do. Skip a master's, let's just dive all the way in and go after it. And part of that motivation was one, I loved what I was doing. I loved the idea of research, selfishly second. I met, met some people and they're like, hey, if you want to work remotely, essentially you got to be the best at what you do. And so in engineering, it means getting a doctorate, it means doing the research, it means becoming extremely talented in a particular subject matter. Mind you, these, this is before work from home becoming what it is now. Remote work is great. Back then, you needed to be the 1% of the 1%. And so I said, OK, game. That's the challenge. That's the opportunity I'm, gonna, I'm chasing after. That's the thing I want to do. So I went in. We went in. We started diving into studies. We started doing the research. I made the leap of like, hey, let's just do, let's bet on myself. Let's bet on what I've been, I know works, which was what's between my ears. And let's dive into school. Let's dive into research. You can live in the lab. And I was a happy camper. I, I tell those asking me, like, hey, what was your studies like back then? I was like, so I was the guy in the lab that would get in at 8 PM, leave my lab at 6 AM, work two jobs, <laughs> and then start all over again the next day. But in that process, something happened. So something happened where I met a family friend of mine, and he was like, hey, John, we're starting this engineering program for high school students. Do you want to help? And I was like, sure, I got time. <laughs> My mentor is in the back. Right, we feel like that all the time, right? We got time. No, we, we, we don't have time. But I, I caught the, the, the heart for it. I caught the heart of the program and the idea that, hey, it was what we call a Title I school, so programs very much in your heart, where it's underrepresented minority populations. A lot of kids were told, hey, you graduating? That was it. That was it. That was the achievement. That was the achievement of a lifetime was graduating. And I couldn't stand that. So I dove in. I dove in with my two feet, coming in there and trying to figure out, hey, how can I help? What can I do? Put me to work. And so I did. So I was there <laughs> three to four days a week, talking to these students, understanding what it meant to build programs like this, where you essentially you're like, hey, when you get out of high school, you need to essentially have like a 3.5 GPA. You better be in calculus. I know some of us never took calculus because you didn't need to. But that was it. It was like, hey, you need to be calc ready coming out. And for a lot of our students, that was tough. They were coming in maybe with pre-calculus their freshman year. And so we built the programs. We built the foundation. How do we get the support? The high school we were working with was top of the line, and the principal there was all about it. So we put the work in. We started building this program from the ground up. I fell in love with being in the classroom more than I could have ever imagined. I loved watching that spark where some of these kids, maybe their whole lives, were told, right, just get through high school, find a job. The idea of a four-year college was not on the table. We gave them a little bit of hope. We gave them a little bit of that, oh. And so I finished out my, my research, and I was like, hey, what am I going to do now? Like, now I'm, I'm internally torn be, between living in a lab and, and becoming a researcher and this other world of helping people, of helping them find that aha moment. And so my old alma mater came calling. They said, hey, we heard what you're doing over here. Come on home. Growing up in Hawaii, high school is what you get asked about. We always joke about it like we call this the mainland. Up here, we say, hey, where'd you go to school? And, gonna, and most answers are UNLV should be your answer, right? Back on the island, it's like what high school you went to. And that's what matters. You will be 
fair or unfairly judged by what high school you went to. Because same with the university, right? There's a tier system, and we understand that. And it just gives perspective. Same is there. And so I went back. I said, you know what? I'm down. Let's do this. Let's build out this program from the ground up. Let's figure out what this needs to look like for your demographic and how to make it work. So I left the dream of working from home, traveling some, but finding my place now working with students. Finding though that aha moment. And so for me, the moment that I remember most when I was there was one of my students. He was, let's just call, let's just call it a football school. Very much Bishop Gorman of Hawaii, for those that are Vegas people understand. And I had this guy. He was 6'3", 285, freshman in high school. He, yeah, he pretty much just told, you're good at football. You're going to play football. Focus on football. But he came into my classroom and he said, Dr. Hirano, why is, what else can I do? I said, hey, there's this thing called engineering. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not an easy road forward. But you have a knack for it, right? At first, when we're building a program, people are like, it's robotics. It's a fun class. Not when you have a PhD in engineering and are like, no, we're going we're gonna to teach you calculus as freshmen. We'll figure out the details. Trig is a thing you need to know. You'll be OK. And so he, he dove in. He dove in and had his eyes wide open the possibilities that like, hey, I don't just have to do what I'm told. The prisms and the box that friends, families, who often, more often than not, have your best interest in mind when they tell you these things, then maybe that those walls need to be broken a little bit. Opportunities are out there. And so we, they came in, we had this great time, we walked through that process. He's gone on his way, done his own thing. But for me, those are those moments that made it worth it. Moved forward some time, went through that program, ended up finding myself at higher ed, kind of doing the same thing. Like, how do we take these programs at the higher ed level, think down to colleges, make it palatable for high school students? And I was all about it. 2017 comes around. Yep, 2017. My wife will kill me if I get this wrong. I got married. <laughs> and so we moved. We had a choice to make. Life happens. Life, life changes things. I often say one of the best moments of going home was outside of this career half was my opportunity to spend time with family. I love my family. And so that opportunity of time, we, we went through a lot as a family, but being home was probably the best thing that could have happened to me, let alone going to, you know, whatever college I thought was going to be the better career move. Life changes. You know, life will take you on that journey. Be okay with it. Fast forward again. We, we get here. My wife has a job in Vegas, and we're like, okay, let's do it. How hard can it be to find a job as an engineer? Harder than you think. <laughs> For all my... Doctors in the room, sometimes it's this term you'll hear, so be very careful. I, I'm still say pro grad school, pro becoming a PhD. Being overqualified sometimes is, is a real problem, and it was for me. But it didn't stop me. I kept doing things. I kept pursuing the next opportunity, taking the next chance, chance. And so this opportunity to become what we call a ghost culture US bank came up. I said, you know what? Let's do it. Let's dive in. Let's find that moment. Let's find that aha. Uh -huh. So we did it. And so I get to have the opportunity to talk to students. We have a great relationship here. And so I get to talk to, to students like yourselves about what's next, what's in front of you, how to process through some of those things. And more than anything else, the highlight of my days are giving people hope. The hope that the boundaries that maybe you put over yourself, maybe those around have put you on, around yourself, those walls can get pushed over. We can break them down. Sometimes we have to chip away slowly. But there is a future so big on the other side for you that you just have to take a leap. And so that, that's my journey. It's a lot of these like, huh, maybe we'll take that jump. 
And so I just tell you guys, seize the moment. There will be opportunities and things that come in front of you that you have to take a pause and be like, is this a risk I want to take? Is this a jump that maybe didn't make sense? And for some of you, there is a great plan that you have in front of you of what the next 5, 10, 15 years look like. It's probably not the final plan. I know for, for myself, if you had asked me, even as graduating college, is this where I would be talking to students? I hate public speaking, by the way. <laughs> like, hate it. But life, this is where life has taken me. This is the journey that I am on. And I say with every opportunity, with every moment, there's an opportunity to learn something. For many of you going through this program, which I wish I had as an undergrad, you've learned something. Maybe you learned, like, research is not my thing. <laughs> You're like, this is the best semester the year I took to know that I do not want to go to grad school to do research. Maybe it's something else. Or maybe you're like some of the people that share and you're like, this is it. I know it. I've done it. I put the stamp of approval. This is my journey. This is where I'm going. Great. But remember, every moment is an opportunity to learn. Sometimes it's about yourself. Sometimes it's a skill set. Sometimes it's people that you meet. Hold on to those things because they're important. The things you've gone through, the experiences you went through, even the traumas that, that you experience, leverage them for the future. Leverage them for the things that are ahead of you guys because your guys' future is bright. Take risks, be measured, but enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Um, next up, we are going to have just a few remarks from the Office of Undergraduate Research. We actually have Susan Hall with us here today. Good morning, everybody. I see a lot of familiar faces, uh, some students that we've already worked with in undergraduate research. Um, I just wanted to, for those of you who haven't done undergraduate research, I just want to give you a few ideas of why it's important to start research. And the earlier you start in your academic career, the better off you are, the more opportunities you have during your academic career, and the further it'll take you. So one of the main reasons for doing undergraduate research, maybe for some of you, is obviously you're going on to graduate school Depending on what school and program you're going to, they may require undergraduate research or some research just to get into the program. And the more, the more research you do ahead of time, the more opportunities you're going to have. A lot of times there are professors that are, get their experts in their field and they're looking for students to work in their lab. What they're going to look for is somebody who's had experience doing research already and they would most likely choose that student over someone who hasn't actually done research. Um, another reason to do undergraduate research is it gives you an opportunity to present your research in our, our symposium, for example, where for the first time you have an opportunity to present the research that you've done through a semester, a summer, a whole year, working with a faculty mentor here on campus. And a lot of students don't, have never done public presentations before, so it gives you an opportunity to do that in a safe environment with your peers and familiar faces, people you know on campus. Um, and then you kind of, a lot of students get the bug where they want to do it again. They may have other opportunities that are offered to them. Um, one example would be we have about five students that go every summer to uh, do a a, um, a symposium at Harvard and present their work that they did here at UNLV. Um, and that looks great on a CV and a resume. Um, and one other thing that we have that a lot of students overlook is an opportunity to publish your research. We have a journal, 
It's all undergraduate students, probably some of your peers. Some of the students in this particular one are steer, still here at UNLV. They haven't graduated yet. This is a peer-reviewed journal. The information, the research that's done is downloadable to anybody. This is lives on forever in the digital scholarship at UNLV. Um, we have thousands of students that, whose work has been downloaded across the world. And one other form of um, preservation that we have to offer students is our um, undergraduate research. Um, it's called DUREP. And if you did present a poster and you want that to live on forever in UNLV, we offer the opportunity for that to also be available to anybody online across the world. They put your information in digital scholarship and your poster comes up from the presentation that you did. We do have a lot of other things to offer students other than just those. We have research funding. We have our Research Skills Academy, which is a series of webinars that go through the different steps of undergraduate research. And uh, we have research instruction where we would visit your uh, faculty's um, classroom and go over anything that the students are interested in, interest in learning about research. And I think for some of you, you've already presented in our symposia, so um, that would be like the final culmination of a semester or a year's worth of, of research that you've done. And with that, does anybody have any questions? I have, I'm gonna leave some of these flyers in the back just to give you an idea of some of the things we do. If you wanna take a, a look at it on your way out or just pick one up. We are available by email. You can schedule a research advising appointment with us if you do want to do research going forward. Thanks for your time. All right, thank you, Susan. Um, under, Office of Undergraduate Research, a huge partner on this program, so thank you all. Um, I'm going to start my process of wrapping up a little bit here. Um, but before we do, a few more messages. Um, so I want to take a, a moment to recognize our Grad Rebel Advantage mentors. So feel free to wave a hand, take a bow, whatever you like. I know we have some here today. <laughs> Thank you all so much for your dedication to this program. It could not happen without you, and we greatly appreciate it. I know your mentees appreciate it. Um, a, a lot of work this year, and, and, and thank you. Just thank you so much. Um, I also want to share a few well wishes from some of our other campus partners with you all, so real quick video here. On behalf of Career Services and Workforce Development, Congratulations, Grad Rebel Advantage participants. As a reminder, you can access Handshake and career coaching throughout your life. Congrats! Hi, I'm Terry Bernstein. I'm from the Center for Academic Enrichment and Outreach, and we congratulate you all. Good luck. Um, as you can see, there are just a huge range of campus partners involved with this program, so just taking one more moment to acknowledge them. So thank you all again who are here today, who made it in person, um, those of you on live stream or who might watch this later. Um, thank you to our campus partners and mentors who really are the backbone of this program. And a special thank you to my amazing Grad Academy team out in the hall who checked you in um, and have helped support from behind the scenes all year. And also, lastly, to our mentees. I mean, you are the root of this program. Thank you so much for participating. We're proud of what you've accomplished, um, how you've grown throughout the year. And we wish you the very best of luck in your future journeys. Please feel welcome to reach out to Grad College at any time if you have questions or need support. So thank you all again, and one last round of applause.